welcome to the SCTV on the road from AHA 2022. I'm Davide Capodanno, and I'm going to be joined by Eva Prescott and Stefan Hakenbach to discuss the precise and ischemia extended trials. So Eva, let's start with the precise, uh, what are the key results uh, of this trial? Thank you, David. Um, the trial is uh, comparing a strategy of, uh, well, a combined strategy of deferred testing and CTGA-based testing with, with the, the option of FFR, uh, CTFFR, against usual care in patients suspected of coronary artery disease. And um, the main outcome was a combined outcome of myocardial infarction, all post mortality, and an invasive angiography with no obstructive coronary artery disease. And uh, there was uh, 2,000 patients were enrolled, just more than 2,000, and there was approximately one year follow-up. And uh, the intervention arm had less of the primary events, but that was driven by less uh, angiographies without obstructive coronary artery disease. There were no differences in myocardial infarction or no post mortality. And you wouldn't expect that with only one year follow-up. Uh, importantly, in the uh, in intervention arm, the uh, about 17% had deferred testing and there were no events in this group. And in the usual care, um, only 7% had deferred testing. And on top of that, 10% went directly to angiography uh, without any non-invasive testing. Uh, angina control was similar in the two groups and there was more uh, statin and uh, antithrombotic treatment in the intervention arm. Thank you, Eva. What are the main implications for clinical practice in your opinion? I think the main implications are that guidelines are good and should be followed because the trial shows that, that if you defer testing, you can safely do that. There were no in events in that group. Uh, it also, uh, and because it's a strategy, you can't say which parts of the strategy were driving the differences, but certainly it would be likely that with a, a relatively high proportion going directly to invasive angiography, you're going to have more uh, angiographies with no uh, uh, obstructive coronary artery disease. I think the the, uh, the take home should be that we should follow guidelines, which really do recommend that you do non-invasive testing and that you defer testing if there's low uh, pretest uh, likelihood. Thank you. So we have heard about the precise trial, and now we are going to move on to hear about the scheme extended, which uh, is highly anticipated and give us more follow-up information from a landmark trial presented already in 2019. Stefan, what are the main results? And what are your takes on uh, this trial? Yeah, thank you, David. As you said, the ischemia trial was originally presented about three years ago, and we all know the results of the trial. It was a large trial of more than 5,000 patients with a positive test for ischemia in the setting of suspected coronary disease, and the patients were randomized to an init initially invasive or initially conservative strategy. All patients were on high-dose statins. Revascularization 80% in the invasive arm and 23% in the conservative arm. And after three and a half years, the initial publication showed no difference in mortality between the two arms. Now the trial was extended to see whether an initial signal that there are slightly fewer spontaneous myocardial infarctions in the invasive arm, whether this initial signal would translate into reduced mortality over the longer term. But this was not the case. Now the 5.7 year results were, were reported and mortality was 12.7% in the invasive arm and 13.4% in the initially conservative arm. And that difference was not significant. In fact, the adjusted hazard ratio was 1.0. So no difference in mortality in the longer term. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Of course, mortality, cardiovascular, non-cardiovascular, but uh, do we have any insights on other uh, outcomes of interest, such as myocardial infarction or revascularization? Well, that data was not collected. Uh, only mortality was collected. And as you say, we might want to look at cardiovascular mortality and total mortality separately. There was an interesting signal that the cardiovascular mortality was significantly lower in the invasive arm, but this was offset by a higher mortality of non-cardiovascular causes. Of course, the adjudication is always difficult, so we'll have to see how, what this really means, but the overall mortality was not different. Other endpoints were not collected. We don't know about angina, which was better controlled initially in the initial publication by the invasive strategy, and we don't know about crossover to revascularization, for example. That data was not collected, only mortality. So we have heard about the precise and scheme extended trials, which uh, nicely informed our practice regarding patients with chest pain. And I'd like to thank Eva Prescott and Stefan Hakenbach for their insights.